let's sing a song all about somebody named Christopher Columbus. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and what he did next was more than a little shocking. Sure, we all know by now that he didn't really discover America, the Chinese had likely already landed there, the Vikings definitely had, and obviously there were already people who had been living there for a very long time. We also know that Columbus's discovery was actually a failure to circumnavigate the world in order to find an alternative trade route to Asia, for Spain to exploit at the peril of, well, mostly Italian city-states like his native Genoa. But that's besides the point. Columbus's voyages unified the old world with the new in a lasting way, and the legacy is pretty difficult to fully fathom. Aside from the negative consequences like the transatlantic slave trade, the global expansion of colonialism and the ensuing destruction of Incan, Aztec, and Mayan cultures, just to name a few, Europe's late medieval discovery of the Americas eventually led to the global export of American crops like corn, peppers, tomatoes, and potatoes, the spread of Western ideas about religion, philosophy, science, and mathematics, and the founding of dozens of immigrant-rich, multicultural countries including the United States, the land of the free sample, and home of the Atlanta Braves. So, isn't that enough? When Columbus and his men landed on the shores of the Bahama Islands, the Arawak men and women who ran out to greet them brought food, water, and other gifts. Columbus was amazed by their hospitality and belief in sharing. His immediate response was, according to his own journals, to take several of the natives by force. This was to interrogate them for information about where the gold they wore as jewelry came from. He had persuaded the Spanish king and queen to finance his expedition, and they were expecting a large return of gold and spices. They had promised Columbus in exchange 10% of the profits, governorship over any new land found, and a new title, Admiral of the Ocean Sea. The Arawaks imprisoned on Columbus's ship eventually led him to Hispaniola, the island now shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic. From there, he returned to Madrid to tell the monarchs a series of lies. He told them that he had reached Asia and promised that in exchange for a little help from his majesties, he would be able to send them as much gold and slaves as they needed on his next voyage. He also brought them several dozen enslaved Arawaks, thus beginning the transatlantic slave trade. For his next voyage, because of his extravagant promises, he was given 17 ships and more than 1,200 men. Despite the manpower, he couldn't find any gold. So he had 1,600 Arawaks rounded up in a single slave raid. He had 500 of them chained and sent to Spain. 200 of those died en route. And that was too many deaths for Columbus because it made the venture unprofitable. So Columbus turned his focus back to gold. He relocated to an area he believed rich in gold and demanded that each native over 14 years of age pay him a tribute of a particular amount of gold every three months. Those who failed to round up the specified amount had their hands chopped off and bled to death. In reality, the natives of the area had been given an impossible task. The only gold around were modest dust fleck deposits in rivers, so they fled, were hunted down by dogs and killed. Arawaks who tried to put up a resistance were easily killed by the superior weapons of the Spaniards. When Columbus took captives, he hanged them or burned them to death. He and his men, of course, raped the local women en masse. The Arawaks began to commit suicide and kill babies to save them from the Spaniards. In two years, half of the original inhabitants were dead. The population continued to decline rapidly for decades until there was not a single Arawak left. According to the first-hand accounts of Bartolomé de las Casas, over three million people died from Columbus's reign of terror. That was a lot of fun, and told us all about Christopher Columbus. Columbus is without any exaggeration, a treasonous, lying, genocidal, rapist, slave trader, and yet we celebrate him. Millions of Americans will be observing Columbus Day on Monday, as we in the North celebrate our Thanksgiving. Imagine how Jews would react to an Adolf Hitler Day. How you would react. To celebrate a genocidal maniac expresses either support or indifference, solace in their deaths, or a belief that their lives didn't matter, that those types of people 
don't matter. The indigenous peoples of the Americas have already endured quite a bit with surprising patience and dignity. The Washington Redskins, Johnny Depp, the Warner Brothers, tribal sovereignty and treaty violations, residential schools, cultural genocide, biological warfare, slavery, mass murder. So I ask you, 